Next game up, PME versus the Gators. We just saw um, PME get a loss to um, BG, and Don't Sleep comes in. Ah! Next game up is going to be PME versus the Gators. PME is coming off of a loss to DG, and the Gators is coming in for a loss to Don't Sleep. We're not really going to say much about the Gators because um, um, we spoke about them earlier. Um, on the other side, I mean, listen, they're trying to show the fact that they can be a top team. It hurts them that they had just lost to DG, but they got to win this game. They can't keep it close. They need it for the standings because at the end of the line, end of the day, even if you have a team in your division that beat you, if you could finish with a better record, then that all that, that's all that matters. So they got to look at it as we're trying to beat Gators as quick and fast as possible, especially after our last loss. Yeah, um, they got to show, <clears throat> they got to come out guns blazing in this game. They know they should know that the Gators have a team that has no direction, barely has, you know, you, if they paid attention to them that last game, they have a lot of holes on both sides of the field. So they have an opportunity to exploit that because they have ultimately more talent on this PME team, and they got to use that to their advantage. They know that they came from a big loss to the, um, them Gators. They got to come making this Gators team pay for the loss that they had against the Gators. They have to take their anger out on them, like, like I say. And they got to just put this game away quick. If they don't, it may hurt them at the end. Of the, um, it may hurt them in the end. We're going to jump right into the game. After getting the first down, Rutgers this by Rico. Throws the Shane open in the gap for a decent game. If you look here, nobody feels a gap that Rico is coming in from, and he leaves it wide open. Third down, Ralph finds Jake Quan open in the front of the end zone for the touchdown. If you look here, Ant and Isaiah are not communicating on the sideline. Sean, Sean Gene is going to get the extra point. 7 0, PME strikes first. Miscommunication, especially on this play here, as you see Anthony, um, as you see Ant and um, Isaiah not communicating as he goes trying to pick up tone when that's supposed to be assigned by assigned to Ant. So they're confused and ultimately they leave Jake Quan wide open in the front of the end zone. Nelson gets the ball on four rush. He throws deep to Isaiah in the gap. Picked off by Pablo. Jimmy gets the ball back. If you look here, probably Jimmy's open short. Listen, Pablo's their drive pick. This is what he's here to do. He's here to make plays and do whatever it takes to get this team to get away. And that's what he's doing here. I think he needs to be more involved in the offense. Rell is having a great season at quarterback, but Pablo needs to be more involved in that offense. When the defense is following the ball, he's locked in. Great interception there. Rell with two passes in the gap for a nice game, getting them a first down. Rell throws a Pablo in the gap for a decent game. Second down, Rell throws deep to Chad, cutting in the back and end zone. Chad tries to catch it with one hand, but the ball is dropped. Fourth down, Rell throws a Chad on the sideline. Chris just misses the tag. Chad with, Chad with blocking from Pablo, punch on the sideline, dives into the end zone. What a touchdown. 13 0. PME. The question was, was this a tag by Chris? First of all, I'm going to give you the fact that I love the fact that Grell threw the ball to Chad. It couldn't connect. He came back to him. Pablo's, like I said, do whatever it takes to win right here with a great block. And, and Chad gets an end. So the question is, was this a tag by Chris? Ultimately, I'm going to say that this play was close. And you know that those close tags are really hard to read. If you look here, and I'm going to slow it down. It looks like Chris could have gotten a finger on him or a couple of fingers or whatever. You know that those fingertip tags are hard to read fast motion. And it looks like he just misses him here. As Chad is running the sideline, a huge block for a block by Pablo. Getting in the way of two guys trying to run after Chad. And Chad using the IQ that, you know, to dive in the end zone. He dives right as Isaiah makes the tag. That Chad reaches in for the ball for the touchdown. Just gets it. Great play overall by the offense, and Chad dives into the end zone. He made up for that big drop downfield by running into the end zone here. Second down, Nelson is blitzed and sacked by Tone. Third down, Nelson with black and from low, throws a brand on the sideline, caught, but it's called an out of bounds. Gators have to punt. They don't look great. They look at the same way they looked the first game, not to be able to the ball. They're going to have to punt there. Second down, Rell. Goes to Chad in the gap, picked off by Prodigy. If you look here, it's just opening short. 
That is a great play by Pranji. This is how old score should be. Somebody take it to the next level. And this is why, because he's capable of making plays when given an opportunity. Great interception there. And this is crazy that Chad, I mean, um, this is the, the thing about this is Rel was going to Chad a lot um, in this half. So eventually a, a defender is going to see that and start reading the play and baiting it. That's exactly what happens here. We see sparks of that good defense by Prodigy every now and then. And right now he's starting to show that spark. This is a much needed play by for the Gators, but Prodigy showing his talents here. Nelson throws a Rico cut in the middle off target incomplete. Second down, on Nelson on four rush is sacked by George. Third down, Nelson is blitzed by Rob. Runs for a short game as Ant misses the block. I know Ant likes to criticize people, like to tell about a lot of things. He has to do his job. Misses a huge block here. Fourth down, Nelson's going to throw it up. Knocked away by Carmine, taking us into the half. 13 nothing, PME. And PME doing what they had to in this first half. They scored twice early, and they kept the Gators to a to, to nothing. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to take this team out early. That's exactly what they're doing right now. They take, like I told them, take advantage, take their anger out on this team because of that loss to DG. The points matter in the standings. They're starting off good with two touchdowns. Yes, um, Rel may throw a pick right here, but it doesn't really hurt them too much because they're already ahead two scores. If they speak and um, perform. At this rate, I think they have a good chance of having a blowout win. If as long as they keep this momentum, but right now they're looking good enough. From Gators, if it bleeds, we can kill it. We got an interception. We can make plays. We have a pulse. We can yeah. play football too. Yeah. Those are all the things that they should be talking about at halftime. Like I said, in the UFL league, you have a puncher's chance. But the only way to have that punch's chance is to throw a punch. So if they realize that they're capable of making plays when they really try, things can happen similar to this interception. We're going to jump into the second half. Second half, Nelson throws a brand in the gap. Pass the slope, but still fought for a nice game. This is what I'm talking about. I expected so much from Brandon. I'm so frustrated he got injured. But he's glad to have him back. We know Nelson's glad to have him back too. Fourth down at the 20-yard line. Nelson will block it from most. Finds Isaiah opening the front of the end zone. Another touchdown. If you look here, Isaiah cuts in from the back of the end zone. Nobody picks him up. He's able to score. Rob gets the interception on the extra point. 13-6. Gated score. And this was the PME defense getting caught, got caught sleeping. As Isaiah cuts from the back of the end zone, nobody's communicating following where he's at. As he cuts right in the front, he fills in the gap in the front. Nobody's paying attention, and Nelson's able to find him. It took two games for Nelson to find a receiver in the end zone. But finally, he's able to do it, getting this Gators team into back into the game with a 13-6 um, with a 13-6 game, they are seven points behind. They have some life, and they're finally showing it in this game. Jimmy gets the ball in the four and out. Rell's going to throw the tone on the sideline. That's going to be dropped. Third now, Rell rolls right and throws deep to chat in the gap. Picked off by Prodigy. Prodigy, second pick of the game. And I know Chad's like, oh, I, this guy can't guard me. But he had two interceptions. Oh, God. Great play by Prodigy, showing the capability of making plays Showing the capability of being the player that I've always dreamed from to be. And Rel throws his second interception in the game. Well, I, I, I say this. The reason why our Prodigy is so successful, because one thing that I figured, one thing that I'm guessing he figured on the field is that Rel likes to throw to chat. It's a given. If you look at what's been happening, a lot of his passes are going straight to chat. So Prodigy knows that, especially downfield. So he's going to read that and bait him into throwing it downfield. That's exactly what he does with two picks, getting them back on the field. They need to keep capitalizing because this man is doing whatever he can out there. Third down, Nelson throws a prodigy on the side. An incomplete, but Carmine is flagged for early contact. That's a big play by Carmine. Not having an all-star year that he had last year. And, he, you know, just gets a call for a little too much physical play. Nelson then on, on four rush throws Isaiah in the gap. Contact from Pablo, the pass is dropped. Pablo is going to do whatever it takes to win the game. 
a pass catch pick. It does make a blot. It has to knock somebody out. And if he dies, he dies. Great hit by Pablo here, knocking the ball out. Fourth down, Nelson will block it from those. Those if we go in the gap, 50 yard line, knock away by Tone, turnover on downs. Gators cannot capitalize on the interception. And this is PME waking up after that touchdown that they gave up on defense that last drive. They wake up, they're locking up. Even though Carmine got early on that one play, it didn't rattle them. You see Pablo with this big knockdown here, um, with, with this big defensive play here. You see Tone getting his hand in on this pass to Rico here. So again, that flag did not slow down their defense at all. They were able to stop the biggest plays of the drive and prevent them from this Gators team from getting the first down. Good defense by PME. Third down after a short pass, well, it's blitz and sacked by Rico. Pay me after punt. This is what they need Rico to eat. A guy that's capable of doing everything and anything. And he comes away with a huge shot. Great play by Rico there. Second down, Nelson throws to Brandon in the gap for a nice game. Third down, Nelson on four rush. Throws to Rico in the gap. Picked off by Jake Vaughn. If you look here, Chris is open in the gap. Big one guy to be an all star, making his second all star of the year of, 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 in the row. And he's showing the capability of not only making plays on both sides of the ball, but being a great leader. Great play by him there. Showing by doing and doing by showing. Fourth down, after a few plays, it has got to stop the first down. Rail on four rush, throws the child in the gap for a decent game, picking up the first down. End of the game, PME coming right with the win, 13 6. Listen, you said in the beginning of the game that PME has to put up numbers or whatever because they're fighting in the standings. Yes, that is important. But right here, the win was just as important. At the end of the day, um, this team did not look good leaving that DG game. When they were when they lost that game, they were at each other's throats in the beginning um before this game started. They were arguing, they were fighting with each other, you know, arguing about who did this, who did what, who's to blame here, whatever. But as soon as this game started, all of that went out the window. So I got to give this team some credit. They were able to refocus themselves on this game and put them away. I got to give credit to Doughboy, to, to Jaquan, to Pablo, to all of these guys, Terrell, because they showed, uh, to Carmine even, um, they showed a composure. Once the next game comes, they're able to, um, to refocus. And that is why, even though they, they could have did better in this game, I think this was a good win for them, a much needed win for them to show that they could keep control when it matters. Listen, Rell is playing great this season. If you look, yes. at, look at his numbers, I think it's 13 and three. Great, great season he's having. He had a good season last year. I think it was kind of under the radar, but this guy shows he's a very capable quarterback. Shout to him for coming away and bouncing back off that win. This, this defense of PME, listen, they make plays. You know, right now, they led the league in interception last year. This year, they're in third mm -hmm. with eight. Now, they still struggle pressuring the quarterback, but they got seven sacks this year, mm -hmm. five for eight. So they're playing better on that side of the ball. But this offense, this, they, as long as they're going to keep, you know, brother's going to keep putting them in a position, they're fifth in scoring. So as long as he keeps putting them in a position to win, they're sixth in defense. The, the other side of the ball, things going to take care of itself. Pablo Sean, he was a great draft pick. I mean, yeah. Even though Doughboy moved back in the draft, was still able to snatch him up. Listen, this team is capable of making plays and winning games. As long as they continue to have fun, they're going to make plays. Chad is the um, Rell's go-to guy. And he's the two of the one punch he has with Jaquan. Don't, don't forget um, Shane, you know, other guys on the scene. Pablo on the offensive side of the ball. He has a lot of playmakers and then well. On the other side, it's Gators are going to be the Gators. They show some life by Nelson being able to find Brandon. They show some life as Rico coming away, big sack, making some plays. They show some life for Paji with two interceptions. Again, this team has a puncher's chance, but they have to throw the punches, and Ant must remind the team of that. Yeah, um, the thing about it is, like I said before on that last game, they have the opportunity to make plays happen when it counts. They have enough talent to get it done. They just have to have more cohesion on this team. Rico and Ant has to be on the same page, especially on defense. They got to communicate more. 
Because as you saw, Prodigy was able to have to, to make some huge plays on defense. These guys are able to make plays. You had Mark had, a, had an interception the last game. So these guys are able to make plays when it matters. But they got to be on the same page, and they got to show cohesion out there. They have to communicate more. I believe if their defense is able to put pressure and make things happen, I believe that that's going to be the spark that their offense needs to make things happen. We're going to wrap this one up. PME coming away with the win over the Gators, 13-6. We're going to see you out the next game. Last game up, we're going to have Grind Time versus the Sharks. Grind Time coming in off of a win to the Raiders, and the Sharks are coming in off of a win to the Monarchs. So basically, both of these teams beat two of the top teams in the Eastern Conference. So that's definitely something that remains to be seen. Now, I'm hearing things that Mo from um, Sharks may be out for the year. I got to confirm that, but it's possible. Yeah. I'm heard he got an injury out for the year, which is a huge. Yes. That's devastating. Loss for the Sharks. He's a guy that they drafted. Definitely huge loss for the Sharks on that end. But I, my thing with the Sharks is they haven't been very good defensively. Um, When I look at the numbers, they're the second worst defense in the league. Now, huh. Offensively, they were in the top. It kind of dropped a little bit, but um, this team is definitely has a lot of talent. Um, they haven't really put it all together. But this is a very dangerous team that I wouldn't want to meet in, in, in the regular season, especially in the playoffs. And grind time, listen, they're led by their defense. Lou is not looking the way he looked last year as the league MVP, but these other guys, Prince Mo, Jalen, um, Prince. Um, da Davin, they are backing him up and making plays to make this team formidable. And right now they're trying to lock up the number one seed, something that they did last year. The thing about grind time is, yes, they, they've been living off of their defense this season, which is really a good thing because before they were focused more on their offense. But I would say that um, Lou and this grind time offense still has the ability to pick up where they left off last season. Mm -hmm. Lou is still Lou. He may not be throwing that hot this season, but at the, but when it comes down to it, he is still capable of taking off and showing that Lou of last season, um, that season in the playoffs, and that's when it matters. So I am not going to kill this team or say, oh, this team has no chance on offense because they still have some of their best players that's still there, not performing to the caliber. So that's always a possibility. In terms of the Sharks, it's funny that we're saying that their offense was doing better than their defense when they have such a talented core on defense, but they're right. not performing the way they're supposed to. They have so much. They are probably the most talented defense in the league right now. Right. Even if you count Mo or not, they have one of the talented, most talented defenses in this league, and they're second worst. That is unheard of, and that's because – there's so many different personalities, so many different playing styles, and they still haven't been able to put it together. But when they're cohesive and when they show that fire and tenacity together, they are always going to be a dangerous team. And that's one thing that regardless of what happens in this season or whatever the stats show, you still have to worry about them on both sides of the ball. They just got to play and keep improving, and they're going to be the scary team we always knew they could be. All right, we're going to jump right into the game. Grind time will not have their draft pick, Prince Mo. He will not be here. And as you know, um, like we said, Mo is out. So we're going to jump right into the game. Akon getting started. Second out, Akon on four rush, rolls left, and throws deep to Cass in the middle. The pass is short, picked off by Jalen, giving it to Grind time. If you look here, Akon could have ran in the gap. I think he tried to make something happen in the beginning of the game to give him no momentum. Jalen comes away with a big pick. That's that grind time defense. The thing about this is, 
Akon is fast enough to make a big play on this play, in this play right here. He had the whole gap and the sideline. This could have been a 20, 30 yard run if he wanted to take that, make that attempt. But it looks like he was already focused on throwing it downfield. Unfortunately, that pass was short. It wasn't worth taking a risk when you have a definite 30 yards in front of you. Hopefully, he makes a better decision that next time around when he makes a bad one and he needs an interception. Pass is open. Akon don't have the arm strength to make that throw. Stevie has a stronger arm than Akon. Akon may take a little more risks, but Stevie has a stronger arm. His arm just couldn't get it down there. Prime time can't move the ball, and they're going to have to punt. After getting the first, Akon on four rush runs in the gap for a nice game, gets him near the 15 yard line. Now, this is something Stevie can't do. He cannot run the way Akon runs the ball. Third down, Akon with a quick pass to Bop in the front of the end zone for the touchdown. Defense get caught off guard. Juan gets the extra point. 7 0. If you look here, the defense got caught off guard and Akon made him. And this is one thing that you don't do with a veteran quarterback like Akon. Veteran player like Akon, a three time champion like Akon. You get caught off guard and he's going to take advantage of exactly what you did. If you look on this sideline, nobody's there. So I don't know what the defense is doing. They were, they were talking, trying to strategize, but the drive is still live. So you cannot right. move out of position going to a huddle or whatever they were doing because then you're going to get taken advantage of and that's exactly what Akon does after getting a big run here the defense is supposed to recover and be ready for the next play they don't and they give up an easy touchdown there. after getting the first down Lou throws Ruben in the gap bobble and drop third down Lou is blitzed by Dre blocked by Yomi but it's still sacked by Kaz prime time is going to have to punt it said Kaz may have went early what do you think of the play? And I think that he kind of got away with one here. Um, you know, he went right at the end of three rush. So I think he got like a, a split second ahead of the count. But regardless of what, the fact that he was um, lose already under pressure, I don't think much different was going to happen by that time. So even though he did get away with one, I think it probably would have been the same result anyway because he was not a runner. So, so regardless of what, the pressure by Drake coming in on the blitz was enough to throw that playoff. Kaz might have gotten away with a, a second early, but he still gets the sack, forcing the punt there. Third down, after a short pass, Akon rolls right for the sack by Mijo. Sharks have the punt. This prime time defense is not spoken about enough. They are a top defense, they're number three in defense, and you gotta start putting more respect on the name. Great defensive stop, forcing the Sharks to punt. After getting the first down, Lou with two passes on the sideline for a nice game. Third down, Lou with blocker from Yumi. Yomi is still sacked by Dre. Does this a tag? What you think? First of all, it's great to have Yomi back. Yomi's finally healthy, back blocking, giving him time. Question was, was this a sack? And I believe that this, again, I'm behind the quarterback on this play right here, so it's hard to really see on my angle. But looking at the way Dre dives at um, Lou, it looks like there's, a, there's a chance that he could have gotten him before he falls to the ground. So the ref must have saw what I think I saw because Dre, aggressive enough, he dives and I guess he gets a tag here. Um, he makes an effort because he gets to Yomin on this play and he gets the sack here. Well, it don't matter because on fourth down, Lou on four rush throws it up to David in the back of the end zone. Great catch over Dre for the touchdown. 7-6, they get right back into the game. And you know that, that 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 saying that the ball doesn't lie? This could have been it right here. Because Darren, Davin makes him, makes Dre pay on this play. Catching it over him in the back of the end zone. This man, Davin, has been killing all season. We've been talking about Prince Mo having a good season. But I, think, but I think that the killer on this team has been Davin. He's been the main factor on offense. Nobody's really been able to figure out this guy on offense. He's been killing regardless of what defense he faced. And this is yet another touchdown he's able to add to his season records. And they get um and that's a huge touchdown there. Chucks can't do anything before half, and we're gonna go into the half seven six. Tell me what you think about what's going on so far. Right seven, now, six, sharks. What happened? Seven six shark. Right now, I believe that sharks are putting a lot of plush pressure on Lou. And I think that that is the key for their defense to be successful in this game. Yes, they gave away six points at the end with that jump ball or whatever, but I'm not going to kill them on that because that could have went either way. 
the fact that they're putting pressure on Lou, eventually Lou is going to make a mistake. So as long as they keep him honest in the pocket, put pressure on him, force Lou to make these passes, they're going to have an opportunity for the second area to make some big plays. So that's the main focus that they have to have moving towards the second half. On the other side, listen, grind time defense has been playing great. And they've been waiting for Lou to pick up, just like they've been doing all season. Last season, Lou carried them. This season, they're carrying Lou. Nobody complains if the defense gives up a touchdown. Lou scores, everybody's cool. If Lou don't score, the defense makes a stop, they're cool. So it doesn't matter how they win. They just find a way to win, which is why they lead the division right now. We're going to jump right back into this game. We're going to jump into the second half. After getting the first down, Lou throws a rob in the middle. Drop, picked off by Ja. Sharks get the ball back. They're grab. Very glad to have Ja back, especially that Moe is probably done for the season. Ja with a great catch, um, interception, I mean, I'm sorry. He's a former All-Star. He's definitely capable of making big plays at the corner position. Great play here for the interception. But this guy, Rob, has to catch this pass. This is not Lou's fault. A lot of these passes that Lou threw on interceptions, sometimes pick sixes, a lot of them were not his fault. A lot of them were um, at the... He- at a lot of them were caused by drop passes, deflected passes. So these these things like have been killing Lou all season, and it doesn't change here as Rob here drops a touchdown, a, a, a pass in the middle of the field that could have led them towards the end zone, and that leads them to get an interception going the other way. Akon gets the ball back with three passes in the gap for a decent game. Fourth down, Akon at the 40 feet line. The block and block great day. He throws a meek in the gap, drop, turnover on downs. Meek was frustrated, he thought he made this catch. I thought the ball came out. I thought he didn't have it long enough. He has to be able to make these catches. A lot of people call him 50-50. I've called him 50-50 because he's been inconsistent, and this is a big drop he's going to have. That's going to give Brian Time back the ball. Lou, with three passes in the gap for a nice game. Fourth down, Lou on four rush, rolls right. Those who drop in the back end zone low and picked off by Herbie. That's going to be a touchback. Listen, that is another interception by Lou. Herbie, a former UFL All-Star. Herbie, a, a former UFL All-Star MVP. is a capable playmaker, and he makes Lou pay right here for a bad pass turnover. And this is because Lou is under pressure. Like I said before the end of the, um, at the end of that first half, you put pressure on Lou, it's going to make him inaccurate here. They force him to roll out. He throws the pass low. Um, and it leads to interception. Um, Herbie makes a great dive interception. So, again, he was throwing it low, but Herbie makes a great play to get the interception for the touchback. That's a way to read the play and be there for the ball and make something happen for uh, with that one there. Sharks is going to get the ball back. As you can see, they're not able to make any plays and they're going to punt. If you look here, Bo is going to be on the return. He's going to get through the gap, run all the way down the field, into the end zone, for the touchdown, 12-7, they're doing it away to special teams, backing up their quarterback when he needs their help, 12-7, grind time. I don't understand why you would throw the ball midfield to both. One of the worst people on this team to throw the ball to, because this man is known for running back kicks and punts. So why would you give him the ball in space? That's the worst thing you could do. As you see him get the ball, he runs right through the gap, Nobody's able to catch him, runs into the end zone. I'm throwing this ball out of bounds at the 48. I'm forcing him to make some plays. Don't give him the ball on the punt because Bo is too fast and elusive to give him the opportunity to run that ball back. They did, and he's able to get into the end zone here. Akon gets the ball. Remember, the clock is moving with a little time left. It's 12 7 grind time. Akon on four rush, exact by Mijo. After getting the first down, Akon throws a Herbie open in the middle for a nice game. If you look here, Bo points him out late. Third down, Akon is blitzed by Anthony. Akon runs for a short game, but AK is called for the flag. Holding, that's going to bring him back. What you think of the play? This was clearly holding, and this was unnecessary because, yes, Anthony got by him, but Akon is fast enough to get by Anthony anyway. So let him roll out. If they didn't try to do too much, he pulled Anthony down with him. That is a huge hold that brings the offense back, losing 10 yards. Akon's going to get the ball with blocking from Stevie. 
goes in me on the sideline, gets me to the three yard line. Last play of the game. Akon throws the job open in the front of the end zone, off target, incomplete. End of the game, grind time comes away with the win 12 7. This could have been a walk off right here. Job wide open in the center front of the end zone. Akon just missed this throw. That's all you can say. Regardless of what happened in the beginning of the game, what happened here, what happened there, um, guys are dropping passes or whatever, Akon had the opportunity. The ball was in his hands. He could have won this game. He threw the ball away. That's all there is to it. You got to make plays like that. This can be a playoff, uh, a playoff play where you can walk off in, 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 in the end zone to get them moving forward. This could have been a championship play where this is a, everything is on the line. Akon couldn't make that throw. So at the end of the day, it all comes down to this play right here. And when you're put there to make that throw, you have to make that throw. Everything else doesn't really matter. Could they have played differently um, on, on offense? Yes. There's a lot of mistakes that they made. But at the end of the day, Akon had the opportunity to make the throw, and he didn't. And that's why they lost right here. It's 12 7. The biggest problem is if you look, he has other guys open. Yes. Yes. We both know Akon missed people open, as I showed. But my biggest problem with this is they went and got Akon because Akon wins games. He didn't win this game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I seen um, during the game, um, Orlando had an argument with Stevie. Stevie didn't want to come out the game at the tight end position. And Stevie's not a big tight end. And he's not, that's not what he's known for. But yeah. he wants to be in the game because he's frustrated he's not starting. Yeah. I mean, if you look here, his numbers are a little better than Akon's when he's starting. Yeah. So when you see, you know, you're not in there, and now you see a quarterback miss a game winner, this hurts. You know, you see your quarterback throw a big interception in the beginning of the game. That hurts. You know, they had the ball seven times and scored once. So if you're Stevie, you're looking and saying, you know, I'm the starter. I go for the team on Sundays. They don't believe in me. You can't tell me that's not going off in the back yet a little bit, just a little bit. So when Akon misses these throws and these reasons why they went on top, it becomes um, frustrating and very questionable, especially when they held a, a, a quarterback like Lou, who's not playing great this season, playing decent, to one offensive touchdown. They got one on the kickoff. So that's definitely something that got to be going through these guys' head. Got to be going through Akon said he's brought here to make plays. And he has he didn't make a play to win this game that they very much needed. He was able to do it against the Monarchs a few weeks ago, if I'm right. So this this throw was, I believe, an easier pass. This is on the like I believe the five or the seven yard line. So this is a routine dump ball that he couldn't make. I don't know if he was thinking too much, anything like that. But my thing is, Akon hasn't been here regularly to be, you know, in a certain rhythm. You know, he won that big game, but that doesn't mean that that's going to be like the, the same every week. You know, Stevie has been here the majority of the games, but I, I don't know. Maybe Orlando's thinking, you know, he doesn't want him to blow out his arm and then lose him Sunday and Saturday because then not, you're not benefiting nobody. So mm -hmm. these are things that Orlando has to think about. Maybe that's the, this, the why they made the decision to keep Akon and bring him in as a starter because they can't use him anywhere else. So. My thing is, I'm not worried too much about that. Yes, Stevie can be frustrated, but Akon, the game was in his hands. He just has to make this throw. That's all I'm saying. Am I worried that he's not going to make this throw again if he's put in this position? No, I'm not. But he just had to make this one. This is one that he's going to remember because he definitely missed out. And on the other side, grind time. They got to be concerned. I mean, they came away with a win. Yeah. Um, if they if they win one of their last two games, I believe they'll lock the number one seed. So um, you know they're happy about that. They'll get a bye. But the problem is, 
Prime times offense, six. Lou has thrown eight interceptions. That's more than double 42 last year. He threw three last year. This year he had eight. He has eight. With two games to go, he threw two interceptions in this game. He threw two interceptions. He threw he threw two interceptions on back-to-back -back drives. They gotta make sure Lou don't lose them games. Because uh... you could, you could, listen, one thing you can't do in the UFL is turn over the ball. It's hard to score in this league. And Lou has been doing that all season long. Now, the defense have bailed him out. It has. But what happens that one day when they can't? I don't know why Lou is playing the way he's playing this season. Um, It's it's unfathomable. Unfathomable. Like, I think they, did I say unfathomable. that? Unfathomable. I, I don't don't correct me. I, I I know what I'm saying. I'm fan a little bit. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's unbelievable how his play has progressed. I know I said that right. Yeah. And he's just not that same lights out quarterback that we've seen before. He also been sacked eight times, which is I believe the top five in the league. So they got to figure something out. Now, on the other side, this defense, third in scoring, you know, when I'm looking at the stats, they're third in scoring, but they don't sack very well. They're 13th in sacks. They don't, they're not topping interceptions. They, they're ninth in interceptions. So they're tied for ninth. They don't have a team defense that's going to make big plays as far as sacks and interceptions. They just make stops. They bend, but don't break. But if Lou continuously makes these turnovers, they don't got the defense that's going to go out and be able to take the ball from the other teams. They're going to just try to hold the fort, and eventually they're not going to be able to make a stop. But I'm going to be brief and say that it's not all Lou because one of those interceptions was from a drop pass, and that's also something that's been happening to Lou all season. Guys having routine passes in their hands, they drop it, the team gets a pick. Sometimes those will run back to um, for six on the other side. So just like Lou is struggling, these guys got to play for him and catch these passes. Once they, when they're dropping these passes, it makes Lou make to, it forces Lou to do more, and that's when he's least accurate. So they first, they have to protect him. The big, a big thing that Yomi's back, he's able to protect him a little bit more. Lou can be more comfortable in the pocket. But these guys got to catch his passes when Lou throws him the ball because if not, Lou is still going to be forced to, to, to do too much. And they're going to be right back to what they've been going through all season long. We're going to wrap this one up. Um, possibly the next show. Yeah, the next show we'll show the candidates of who's up there for the awards. Yeah. Um, the All-Star. We're going to try to get an All-Star preview video for y'all mm -hmm. really quick. Um, they're going to be 21 All-Stars this year. Mm -hmm. We're going to have two to three a team. Um, the team in the championship game, the players that make the all-star team will not be allowed to play in the all-star game. Just to let mm -hmm. you know, that is a league decision. So if you are in the championship game, even if you want to play the all-star game, you will not be allowed to play the all-star game. I will hope you will come and get your stuff um, because especially with the theme we have in this year, and we'll talk more about that. You'll see that on the all-star preview. I'm short little video, nothing really crazy. And and then we'll have a star video. But um we're almost home. Two weeks left. Um counting this week. So I hope y'all guys ready almost at the end of the season. On behalf, oh. we're gonna wrap this one up. On behalf of Real Tough Talk, I want to thank y'all for being with us. I'm Stephen J. That's my partner Ghost. And we're gonna see y'all guys next week filming the last two episodes. Last two weeks in the season of Real Tough Talk. We out of here. See y'all later.